What's up, Core Reporters? Welcome back to my channel. In fact, I actually forgot to test the audio on this before I started filming, so let me just go ahead and do this live now to make sure it's okay. Okay, voila, we are in business. So when I did my video the other day recapping Kale's Coffee Convos podcast, in which she spoke about her kids kind of like wanting to live with one parent over the other right now in her life. So she hinted at Isaac wanting to live with her full time, and she hinted at Lincoln wanting to live with Javi, and then Lux wanting to live with Chris. You know, I'm laughing because I'm thinking about all the all the, the, the spider web of dad she's got going on there. Um, so that's basically the thing. And so in the comment section, a lot of you guys were like, Grace, hurry up, listen to her Baby Mama's No Drama podcast episode because that one really takes the cake. I said, why does it take the cake, you guys? What could have happened there? I was not prepared for what I heard because at this point, I got to tell you, I feel like a lot of these like celebrities are just like, or like famous people are are like displaying their kinks to us. Like, you know how Chloe uh, Kardashian has that humiliation kink. That's why she kept running back to trash can Thompson, right? Now with Kale, she and Elijah, they seem to have some sort of a cuck kink going on because the way that she has just been disrespecting this man um, since the moment that she introduced him to us is wild. So she's got a series of podcasts, as you guys know, and like she's always talked about how Chris Lopez is that guy. Like she would have done anything for him. She would have bought him a car. She would, she already bought him the designer dog, so she can't even say she would have done that. She talked about how she would suck his toes. She talked about how he he could tell her to jump and she would say hi hi, like how hi. That's how in love she was with this man, right? And these are stories that she's been telling while while having babies by Elijah, right? But now at this point, she's taken things a step up from just having babies with Elijah. She is engaged to Elijah as well, meaning that they are really going to formally, legally commit to this relationship, right? So there, there should be a certain level of like moved on, like commitment to this relationship. But no, take a listen to what it is that she had to say, you guys. Elijah, you, you gotta wake up, babe. You gotta wake up. This girl does not respect you one bit. Oh, I'm gonna press play, you guys available to us and i think that a lot of especially like gen z specifically we are looking they're looking oh, at hang on sorry you guys it skips my thumb must have gotten in the way but on that not that i didn't agree but i wasn't it was someone with kids i wouldn't even go off on social media and we just want to address this because <laughs> these and i are we're here when it comes to this yes. situation and I have made it abund abundantly clear over the years that I would never date someone with kids. I wouldn't even date my ex that has kids that are my children. So, um, well, you know what's funny I is that my opinion kind of changed over, I would say the last year. Cause I never really agreed with you on that. Not that I didn't agree, but I wasn't, it wasn't like, I was like, maybe I'd be open to dating someone who had a kid or two. Like if anything, if in my situation, I was single, whatever, it wasn't something I ever really thought about. But now I feel like after just, I don't know what happened in this past year, but I'm like, I just don't, I don't see myself doing that if something was that. I think I just really was just like, you know what, maybe, maybe it wouldn't be for me. So I actually changed my mind on that. <laughs> so I think that, um, first of all, I know I'm a hypocrite when I say that. A lot of the comments were like, she has a hundred kids. How can she say that? Well, here's the thing. All of my kids' fathers, I gave them their first children and that was... I've had enough experience, especially with my third. So that first of all, that is a badge of honor for Kale, right? The fact that she trolls Delaware looking for childless men to have kids with. But anyway, let's continue. So now she's going to hone in on her third baby daddy. And we all know that that is none other than Chris Lopez. I don't, I just can't ever picture a life where I am getting attached to someone else's child and then getting it ripped out from under me or just mm -hmm. the back and forth of like the possibility of the child not liking me or me not getting along. Like it's just too yeah. much for me and I'm just not willing to do it. The other side of that is like, I understand parents who are like, I would only date someone that has kids because they mm -hmm. understand, but just the, all that goes into blending 
um, families and stuff like that. It's just too much for me. And just like the whole cheating and going back and forth is not for me. Yeah. And I get it. I am a hypocrite. That makes me a hypocrite. But life is not black and white. And I wish that people would stop seeing it that way. So some of the comments were, but, but Joe had a kid when she started dating him. And did they miss the whole point of what you said? Yeah, I think now. Right. <laughs> like I changed my mind now. Like now I look back going through all my experience and everything now up until this point, yeah, I wouldn't date someone moving forward with kids. There's that on that. Someone said, Imagine if the man she's with felt the same way, then she wouldn't have the other three babies she has, not by him anyway. I am not, when people say they would never date a woman with kids, that does not offend me in any way, shape, right? or form. It doesn't I don't care because I'm not go do you, go be with someone that doesn't have kids. If you think I'm less of a human or less of a woman because I don't yeah. If you think that I'm less of a woman or less of a human because I have children, I don't care. Or if that's just not your vibe, that's okay with me. It doesn't offend me. I've had men tell me flat out they don't date men, they don't date women with children, and that's okay. But a woman can't say that the same about a man. Like I don't understand that. Yeah, like live your fucking life, babe. I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> um, what else? Um, yeah, this also I think this also comes with a lot of um, we read a lot of co-parenting and down into DMs, so I am scarred also. Like I just don't want to go through all of this shit that people go through anymore. Like I think it's okay for people to fucking change their minds or realize something isn't for, for them. You know? Someone said, Do you not think that is a total hypocritical double standard though? Especially you both have forty seven kids combined from sixteen baby dads. Uh yeah. We have forty seven Wow. I did not know that. Okay. The crazy <laughs> The crazy thing is. Can someone do the math on that? Is it true that they've got 47 kids combined from 16 baby dads? Because I know in this whole entire family tree, and you know what? Maybe I should do that. Kind of like the Nick Cannon family tree. I have to close my eyes to visualize. There's Kale. She's got four baby daddies, right? And then I know she did mention on another podcast that Lincoln's got nine siblings. Guys, it might be true. This is a lot. But I'm waiting for the part where she talks about how Chris is the love of her life. That like even now with seven kids, I know men with no children that would date me, and I exactly. agree. List them off if I like. There's always people life. out there that are gonna that are gonna want to be with you whether you got kids or not. Like so, well, it's, it's still personal preference. Like, it's like, all. People are just people are really mad because we're going just off of our experience, and that's what my, is like mind boggling to me. Like this doesn't change your life or affect your life. If y'all not trying to date me and fuck me, what does anything have to do with you? Like what is this? What is so my decision what? to like not want to date someone with kids? Like I don't know. That's crazy. Um, someone, someone said, doesn't she have 87 kids with 84 baby daddies? Why is she being so judgy? It's not about judging, it's about experience. People. Exactly. And that's what people can't wrap their head around. I, you know, Joe and I had a child really young. We've been, you and I and Joe went through our own shit. I don't want to go through mm-hmm. that again. Poppy and I were married and Same. I got divorced. We went through our shit. I don't want to go yeah. through that again. And Chris was the love of my fucking life. You couldn't tell me shit about that man. We went through our shit. I never want to do that again. And it was, I truly believe, and I think I've said, there you go. Chris was the love of my life. There's not even like, okay, like, you know, at that time, let me like stop and say that my fiance, who I went on to have three kids with, is like, you know, now the love of my life. Or like, you know, maybe I thought he was the love of my life until I got with my fiance, who taught me, you know, what love should be. Because remember, Kale has made many serious allegations against Chris Lopez. She has accused him of um, narcissistic ABUSC. She's accused him of uh, choking her. She's accused him of hitting her. She's accused him of, you know, assaulting her, resulting in the pregnancy uh, uh, of Cree, right? So to turn around and say that this was the love of your life and stuff like that, while you're engaged to a whole different man. And don't forget, Kale also caught a criminal charge offensive touching for putting her paws on Chris Lopez as well. Um, So this was a very, very turbulent relationship, if we can even call it that, because again, Chris never even publicly claimed Kale as a girlfriend. He always had multiple girls. He had a girlfriend when he he met Kale, right? And started hooking up with her as well. So I just can't imagine how it must feel to be Elijah, a young tenderoni coming off his first divorce, um, (laughs) and you meet a woman who has four kids by three different baby daddies. And you say, you know what? Like, I know my family would not want me in this situation getting with a girl like this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. You know, like the very few people would get involved with this. Maybe because Elijah seems to be someone who truly yearns for love, right? Maybe if I get into this situation with someone like this, she'll stay, she'll be loyal to me and she'll appreciate that I'm with her or something like that. I'm imagining that's his... um, perspective. It might not be, right? Only for her to turn around and talk about how the man before you was the love of her life. 
and you're over here engaged to her and your three kids in with her and you ruined your relationship with your parents for this girl as well. You're, you and your dad stopped talking and everything. Like, oh, the disrespect of it all. Uh, mind you, just to really uh, put her foot in the disrespect, Kale posted a reel. You can go ahead and see that on her Instagram page um, of like a day in the life. And in one of the parts, you see Elijah begging her to set a date for their marriage or wedding or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm telling you, this is a mix. He might suffer from humiliation or maybe he might be like into like cucking or something. I don't know, but something is going on in this relationship and I'm not really enjoying being subjected to it. Okay. I feel like this should stay behind closed doors uh, personally. Right now. Um, it's not a kale podcast if she doesn't take an opportunity to shade some of her baby daddy's new baby mamas, right? So what I'm going to do now is skip forward up until about 17 minutes when she starts talking about uh, Lauren. So Lauren is the long-suffering baby mama and on and off again fiance of Kale's ex-husband, Javi Marroquina. Okay, let's take a listen starting at $60 and then top frame apps, which is really cool are eyewear.com siblings being reset so a couple weeks ago it might have even been a couple months ago at this point I brought up siblings being resentful of half siblings and yeah. because when you add in the dynamic of okay now my parent is remarried what if they don't like the other parent and because right. they don't like the other parent what does that look like for the relationship with the child because I think it's hard sometimes to compartmentalize each relationship as its own situation and that's why I used to actually I still go back and forth with the idea that like someone who does not like me should probably not be around my kid right because subconsciously you're going to treat that child oftentimes with that bias about the parent or or dislike for the for the parent you may take that out on the child I have a child that comes home to me all the time and tells me they don't like a certain person and it's hard for me because i'm like well what i can't do anything about it you know what i mean like there's other kids involved there's nothing i can do about this so yeah what does that look like so that obviously was in reference to Lauren. Lauren and Kale have a very, very famous long-standing beef with one another. We know that Isaac loves V, his stepmother, and um, Lit, Lit Lux in Creed, like Chris is no longer with the mother of their other brother, right? Their half-brother or what is it, half-brother? Um, so th that leaves for Lincoln to be the one and the other kids are with Elijah and Kale is still with Elijah for now. So it's definitely Lincoln. And so now I'm kind of wondering, well, why would you, Kale, put Lincoln in that position where you go on the podcast and you claim that he tells you every time he comes home that he doesn't like his stepmom at his dad's house, right? Now now you got that target on his back. If you're saying he, um, he's being mistreated by the stepmom because the stepmom doesn't like you, why would you go on your podcast and say that the, the kid doesn't like her? You know, like this is just madness that she would put this on her podcast. Like, you know, sometimes she thinks she's being discreet, but, you know, it only takes like half a brain cell to figure out who she's talking about half the time. Um, I, I, and I do want to know what you guys think about all of this. Do you believe this to be true or do you think that this is just part of her like trying to dig at Lauren and Javi per usual? Very, very interesting stuff. And then later on in the podcast, she taught she she and V start reading stats about like, you know, people who just have kids all willy nilly with whoever and end up with multiple baby daddies, baby mamas and stuff like that. And how typically those people are, you know, uneducated, formally uneducated anyway, um, and living below the poverty line. And so it felt like she was very much triggered by this. And so I'm going to go ahead and play that audio clip for you guys as well. It's really interesting. It says multi-partner fertility is more common among black and multiracial parents than among white and Asian parents. Um, and it also states that multi-partner fertility is more common among parents with less than a bachelor's degree, as may be seen. And they have like one of the figures here. So it says 26% of less than high school, 24% um, only have high school diploma, 26% have some college, 21% associate's degree, and then 11% for bachelor's degree. And I was like, this is just so interesting to me because it's like all this research um, and then it says of all parents aged 40 plus who had children by multiple partners, 15% were living below the poverty line and 20% were between poverty and twice the poverty line. By comparison, parents of the same age group with two or more children who had all their children with only one partner, 8% were living in poverty and 15% were between poverty and twice the poverty line. So it literally just talks about all the, it talks about so much more like risks and protective factors and 
um, family strengthening efforts. Like, it's just really crazy to me that I wonder what the, the correlation is between people that are living below the poverty line or in poverty. So if it's directly, if it's directly correlated to education and Alexander said, that's why the states with lowest education ratings have more kids and more kids as teens, I guess I don't. So you're, so the, the research shows that education is, I just don't know. I think this is a bigger conversation because the, the, yeah, so multiracial situation also plays a factor and mm-hmm. I know that I don't I think I need to do like a deep dive into this because I don't yeah. understand how the lack of education or or not great education would lead to something like this like I find it really interesting that Kale as a college educated woman would be confused as to why um, you know, these stats are the way that they are, that people who have a lower education are more susceptible to poverty and are more susceptible to making, you know, decisions that are not, that are, you know, that are not, not, not that ideal. You know what I mean? Like, it's not to say that if you don't have a university degree that you are, you know, like dumb, this, that, or the other, but it's just, you know, that in general, when you go through that schooling or whatever, you're, you're, you're elevating your ability to think and rationalize in certain ways. And so, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised that she's surprised to be honest with you. And then she touched on the racial aspect here. And I feel like, okay, when it comes to Kale, she does have an education at the very least, um, but all of her baby daddies are men of color. So she does fall into the stats this way. And she is also someone who was living in the poverty line when she started on her journey um, towards uh, racking up the baby daddies, so to speak. Um, and she would still be living under the poverty line, in my opinion, if it weren't for the show, right? And then when it comes to her baby daddies, of the four of them, only one of them is a is a college or university graduate, and that's Chris Lopez. Um, and the other ones have different forms of education. So I know, for example, that Javi, he, um, he has a military education. I don't know exactly what the background of that is, but like, you know, that is something that he's got going for him. I know that Joe decided to pursue a different form of education, which was to get his real estate license. And when it comes to Elijah, I know he does something to do with construction, but I don't know what, and I don't know what kind of um, education is required for that. So basically, this that's just saying typically people who are not college educated are, you know, um, making these kinds of um, uh, family structures for themselves, basically. And another thing is typically when you're going through college or university, you're taking more time, right, to to finish that and, and whatnot. And so um, a lot of these years where, you know, people who are not pursuing university, but are instead starting families, you know, that gives them more time to, to head on to this kind of a journey, right? Um, but you could definitely tell she was quite triggered by that. I'm going to continue the audio because it does go on to reveal some uh, more rather interesting information that I think you guys would, would we would like to hear about it doesn't make sense to me for me what sounds logical would be if i'm living in poverty or around poverty under poverty line i don't want to have kids right away because i cannot afford them so like i need to do a deep dive because i do know that like so again that's another thing that's really interesting because i've the stats have always been out there that people who are poor are the ones who tend to have more children. I remember, you know, back, back, back in the day, like in the 2017, 2018 range, when I was talking to Dr. Drew, he was saying that like people living in poverty are the ones who feel most motivated to have children because there's some kind of like internal clock saying that you're not going to survive long or something like that. And that pushes the biological reproduction urge um, stronger towards those people as well. So it is all actually rather interesting stuff. So I did enjoy, you know, V bringing that up on the podcast and them being able to talk about it and whatnot. And, um, you know, you could definitely go ahead and listen to the podcast if you want more on that. But I mainly wanted to discuss what was going on with um, the the Chris being the love of Kale's life stuff. Like, honestly, Kale, you need to go ahead and apologize to your fiance. Well, unless he's into it because he very well could be into it it's actually starting to seem like he's into it because she's been saying this for quite a while you guys if you listen to my recaps if you watch them um i've been recapping her saying things like this since like she got with elijah the only difference now is that she's engaged to him is it like an engaged to be married or is it like uh you know how like there's a shut up ring where a guy proposes to a girl to get her to stop asking for a proposal well what about like the shut up acceptance where the guy keeps proposing to the girl and the girl says yes to shut him up but she's not going to set the date because i i kind of feel low-key like that's what's going on here Here's the day in my life video that Kale had 
posted on her Instagram. I already fast forwarded through the first little bit. Let's take a listen for when Elijah pops up and she had to make sure that this clip got in, but it's him begging her to, to set a date. Chris already told me that they were supposed to get married this month though. So maybe she backed out. Okay. But I don't want to hear real crying. No, because I said it's September. You better pick a date before it's over. Okay? Okay. So there he was. He said, I said it's September. You better pick a date before December. Okay? And she says, okay. And they close the door. Kale girl. Let me just end this video here, okay? And, you know let you guys tell me how you feel about all of it because I've kind of run out of comments. <laughs> okay. But I am looking forward to hearing everything that you've got to say. Um, so yeah. And if you're in the chat, thank you so much for joining me for this discussion. Um, maybe by the time that I go ahead and like, you know, watch it alongside you, I will have said more in the chat room, but yeah. Goodbye, you guys. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend.